there I was, 22 years old. I'm lying in my bed in the darkness. It's two o'clock in the morning, and I'm staring up at my ceiling. And I'm envisioning all of my future goals and ambitions disappear before my eyes. The way I describe it is imagine driving down a road and you're passing by these billboards. But for me, those billboards were my aspirations. And that's when I realized that those dreams of mine were no longer for me. So, how did I get here? How did I get to that point? Earlier in that day, I walked into my one bedroom apartment and I found my girlfriend crying on the couch. And these were tears that I've really never seen before. And as I sat down next to her, I realized that my life was about to change forever. She showed me that positive pregnancy test, and I realized I was going to become a father. And I'm ashamed to admit this today, but it's the truth. In that moment, I wish I felt excitement, but I didn't. I felt scared and I felt hopeless. And fast forwarding back to that night, laying there looking up at the ceiling, watching my dreams go down the drain, I realized that I had a new responsibility in my life. And that responsibility was to make sure that the soon to be new baby and that my girlfriend are my number one priority. That my dreams of becoming an entrepreneur and my days of professional risk taking were pretty much over before they even started. And at this moment, there was really nothing to my name. I was a nobody. And I knew that I had these two individuals looking for me to be supportive. And so that's exactly what I did. I pretty much worked any job I could so that I could provide for these two people. And I ended up working so hard and so much that I nearly missed my son's birth. He came early, and, and I was across the country. When I heard, I bought the first plane ticket I could home, and I land in San Diego, and an hour later, I find myself holding my brand new boy in the neonatal intensive care unit. And as I'm standing there looking at this premature baby, again, I start feeling scared. And I'm really vulnerable at this time. But standing here today, I wish I could go back in time. I wish I could go back in time to tell that 22-year-old self that becoming a parent is going to prepare you for running an incredibly successful technology company, changing the lives of tens of thousands of patients all over the country. I wish I could go back in time to tell that 22-year-old kid that those two blue lines on that pregnancy test are going to change your life in so many wonderful ways, both personally and professionally, even to the point where you land on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. And I wish I could go back in time to that same young man in the NICU holding that tiny little baby so I could tell him that that little boy is going to shape you into the business person you are today. And the greatest part is, is I know this doesn't just apply to me. There's an entrepreneur in every parent, and I'm certain of this. You already have the skills it takes to go and open up that bakery, to start that flower shop, or to launch the next greatest product. And I want to share with you three parallels that I've seen in my life between the entrepreneurship world and the parenting world to prove to you that you have that skill set today to make that leap of faith in your life. So the first one is called clients in car seats. So I think all the parents out there can resonate with this one. Trying to get your child into the car seat is truly an art. You cannot force them into the car seat, you will lose. <laughs> And I've tried it all, the trickery, the, the look over here and I'll try to buckle you in, even the straight up, straight up bribery, all of which, you know, some work, some fail, but until I found the golden ticket. And the golden ticket is, is if you listen to your child and understand their needs, and you see this not as a one-way road, but a two-way road, that they actually buckle themselves into the car seat and you're not even needed. My son, when, I, <laughs> when, he, when he hears that we're going to Target, he somehow magically gets completely dressed, his shoes are tied, and he's in the car before I could even lock the door. And then my daughter, you know, she's two years old, it's, it's the car wash. But the key is, is that you listen, and you understand where your child is at, and you see this not as a one-person dance, but a two-person dance. And as I mastered the car seat, I realized 
this actually made me a better businessman. So when I, when I started my first company, I think a lot of business owners can relate to this. The, thing, the top thing on my mind is I need to start generating revenue and I need to bring dollars in the door. And among the many hats I wore, I was the number one sales rep and the only sales rep. <laughs> but I was maniacal on making sure that I had a stacked pipeline of new customers. And as I started having those sales meetings, very similar to the car seat, I learned that you cannot strong arm a client you will lose the deal. And there's this great quote that I love by the billionaire Mark Cuban, and he said, selling is not about convincing, it's about helping. And I really love that quote, and I started implementing it into my sales cycle, and I realized that my customers were no longer seeing me as sales rep George. They're seeing me as a friend, somebody they turned to when they had a problem because they know I would find a solution for them. And when I did that, I realized that I gained their trust and before you know it, I turn around and my client just buckled himself into the car seat to join the ride. The second parallel I want to share with you is called diapers and lawyers. <laughs> so, <laughs> trust me, it'll make sense. But um, as I'm standing there in the NICU, going back to that story, I'm holding this little boy. One of the nurses walks by and she goes, Ooh, Dad, it smells like you have to change that one. And I had to have that really embarrassing moment <laughs> when I look up at her and I go, I don't know how. I've never changed a diaper before in my life. And word quickly spread around the NICU, and I pretty much had every nurse surrounding my station offering me advice on how to change the perfect diaper. You have to lift both legs. No, don't do that. Just slide the diaper underneath. Everybody chiming in to give me their tips and tricks. But what it came down to is there's two variables that were unanimous among all the nurses. And that's what I realized, that these two factors were the real recipe behind a successful diaper change. And that is, size matters, and you have to have one you can trust. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, George, what does this have anything to do with lawyers? So when I started my technology company, I didn't understand how crucial it was to have a good legal team by your side. But as my business matured, I started to realize it wasn't only that, but you have to find the right size legal team for the right size company you are. Initially, I went out and I hired the biggest and the best law firm in the US. It cost me uh, $1,900 an hour. And <laughs> as you can imagine, we were a small company. We were such a low priority on their list that the relationship never worked out. So I did a complete 180. I said, okay, I'm gonna go and find a single practice attorney and when we started working with them, we realized that we we're overrunning this individual with work because as a growing company, we were constantly needing different things. And it wasn't until I found my current legal team, what ended up being a perfect blend of the right size for the right size company we are. But in conjunction to that, you need a lawyer that you can trust. When you start a business, there's so much uncertainties and there's so many question marks and being able to call your lawyers to go and have these tough conversations is so incredibly valuable and to have confidence that this individual is going to run the helm of your counsel brings so much stress relief to your life. I'm not going to lie, though, still to this day, I dread the dirty diapers just as much as I dread when I know I have to call my attorneys. But when things get messy, I am so thankful that I have the right diaper and the right attorney that I can count on. And the third parallel that I want to share with you is called the sale and the sleepover. So it's Friday night, and I have a wonderful evening plan with my fiance. And then I get to turn to my children and say, guys, guess what? You get to spend the night at grandma and grandpa's house. And their faces light up. But getting to this moment takes a ton of time and preparation. I have to make sure everything is packed, the PJs, the books, the milk, the stuffed animals, you name it. So when I make that transition and I go to my parents' house to drop my kids off, I have the utmost confidence that this is going to be a successful sleepover. And as I get into the car, driving away as fast as I can, <laughs> um, I put my car into reverse and I'm waving goodbye. I realize that this is a win-win-win. I get to spend a wonderful evening with my fiance. My kids get to go spend the night at the house where they get spoiled. And my parents get to spend wonderful time with their grandchildren. 
And when your company gets acquired, it's kind of a similar situation. I myself haven't been through it, but I've been able to watch my grandfather's successful acquisition, and I've been able to look at some of my close friends who've also been through that journey. And as they describe it to me, they go, George, the amount of time and effort and preparation it takes to get everybody at that table to make that deal happen is so hard. But when signatures are done and everybody lifts their head, it's nothing but smiles. Everybody's ecstatic about what just took place there. And in my eyes, I really look forward to that moment. But still, to me, the significance is really the journey. All of the time, the effort, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the long days, the long nights, the wins, and mainly the failures, too, um, all hoping to get to this one result. I'm not going to lie, though, when Saturday morning rolls around, I really do miss my kids, and I can't wait to go pick them up. And my goal for this talk is really to inspire a parent that felt the same way I did as that 22-year-old kid laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, feeling hopeless and feeling scared and not wanting to let go of their ambitions. So if you were to walk away tonight with one thing, it would be this, is that as a parent, you already have the skill set you need to take that leap of faith in your life and to start that endeavor. Don't let the fear of failure extinguish your dreams. There's only one thing left for you to do now, and that is to jump. So thank you. <laughs>